Following the proxy battle in which Disney seems to have won, at least for today, Disney stock is dropping, dropping, dropping. Now, their allies in the press are coming to their aid, saying that Nelson Peltz, well, somehow he lost more than we ever thought, despite earning hundreds of millions of dollars off the battle he waged with Bob Iger. Today, we'll show you exactly why we believe the media is out to stop Peltz from a return and a possible mousy triumph. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are so happy to have you today as we continue our journey of explaining entertainment and keeping you ahead of the culture curve. Joining us today is Hollywood expert L.W. Ghost. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Nice to be here. Now, Mr. Ghost, we are going to break a, uh, a general rule that we have here on the channel because it's so important today. So we are going to make an exception. We never read articles that are behind a paywall. And today we're going to be reading a Wall Street Journal article that is indeed behind that paywall. You have to be a subscriber to the WSJ. However, we are only going to read the first couple of paragraphs because we believe in absolute integrity here. So we will give you a preview of the article, but we've, we just feel that we have to talk about this. There's well, no way to not talk about it. Is, is this behind the paywall regardless, or is this one of those you get the first three articles free and then you got to join up things? So it's, it's hard to people, keep track. And you, I mean, you, but you, I'm just saying, in theory, people who haven't been to the Wall Street Journal in a while could read this uh, before it goes away. So that's right. And if you have Apple News, you might have access to it automatically and all of those things. But right, right. we try to have the highest standards here. So we are going to read just a few paragraphs, just enough that people know what we're talking about. This is by Kara Lombardo and Lauren Thomas. It says Nelson Peltz got crushed by Disney. Can he recover? So folks, pay attention to the headline. Nelson Peltz was crushed by Disney. That is that is what we are supposed to believe now. After his Triumph Partners lost its proxy fight, a big bet on Unilever comes into focus. Now, Lou, why don't you explain to folks in, in just a few sentences, what is the Unilever uh, fight? Go, uh, what is that about? Well, first of all, Unilever is a massive company. Uh, among their many brands are things like Vaseline and, uh, uh, oh, golly, uh, Dove Soap, Hellman's Mayonnaise, Nor Soups, Life Boy, but also most famously lately, and I say lately not because they just got it, but because it became known that they owned it, Ben and Jerry's, who have made, of course, great uh, political statements and called attention to that. In fact, when everybody was saying, oh, boycott Ben and Jerry, suddenly everybody got to know, surprise, there's a bigger company involved that you need to boycott all these brands if you really want to make a difference. Which As is almost that. always the case. But it reminds me so much of the case of where when Disney started encountering political headwinds from people, uh, lots of people didn't know they were paying for it when they were paying for ESPN as part of their cable bundle. So there's there's an analogous situation there. However, Unilever has decided to get rid of Ben and & Jerry's and all their ice cream brands. Now, they're not saying it's because of politics, but it kind of has to be. Well, let's read what this says. Nelson Peltz's proxy fight at Disney had the potential to help turn around his hedge fund after a tumultuous stretch. Now, it's the framing. It's always the framing, folks. Nelson Peltz needed to turn around his uh, hedge fund. What I love about this, Lou, is just right beside it, you can see Disney Town, uh, zero point eight three percent as they as they put that in there. So funny. And how many billions is Peltz individually and try and larger worth? Uh, I'd like to be crushed like that someday. Oh, six to seven billion. <laughs> Instead, the activist investor's unsuccessful quest for two seats on the media giant's board could make it come back even harder. And that's what they intend to do, folks. They intend to make it harder because the headwinds are against Disney right now. As we have so often said on this channel, the battle really takes place this year if Peltz is willing to do it. Triumph Partners has been grappling with lackluster returns, an investor exodus, and the acrimonious departure of one of its founders. The firm's money under management ended last year at its lowest point since 2012, a previously unreported recent filing shows. But here's the big, art, or here's the big paragraph that you want to see. A Disney victory would have been a welcome win, but many of the big investors who support Peltz needed side Disney chief executive Bob Iger instead. Tryon had made roughly $300 million on its Disney investment. Uh, Tryon had made roughly $300 million on its Disney investment with shareholders rejecting its bid for board seats earlier this month. But of course, <laughs> it says that's in line with the market's rise over the same period. 
Well, yeah, but the reason why Disney went up was because all companies undergoing proxy fights go up. Uh, and again, we're not giving financial advice. That's just the way it is. And uh, it also needs to be said, Lou, that uh, Disney, uh, you know, Disney and, and their allies have claimed this $300 million. Nelson Peltz has said it's more. He has said that it's uh, significantly more than that. So we have to take that into account. I also want to welcome uh, to the uh, to the show right now, Lorne Connor. And uh, Lorne will be discussing with us this, uh, why exactly the media needs to put this narrative out there. So why, you know, why do we need to talk about Nelson Peltz being crushed by Disney? What is the purpose of these articles uh, existing right now? They could have come out a week ago. What's, what's the reason for it? Well, take a look at this, folks. And this has gotten slightly better at the time of recording, but Disney was under $113. And that means that they closed at their lowest in a month. And you can see right here, this April 2nd is when the proxy battle ended. And just as Nelts had uh, predicted, Disney stock began to slide down. Now, we're not here to give you financial advice. We don't know what will happen with the Disney stock over time. But Pelt said that uh, the last time he ended it, he ended a proxy fight with Disney where they were at $127 per share. They dropped to 79 and that's why he got back in. If that happens again, Peltz gets back in, and guess what? Uh, he's got a much better chance of winning in 2025 than he ever had in 2024, and that's consistent with what we've been saying. The other reason that Disney might be interested in articles that support them and talk about Nelson Peltz being crushed, despite making probably 300 to $500 million, that's quite the crushing, this article. This article, I think, is doing significant damage to Disney. It's by Caroline Reed. It's out of Forbes. Disney Star Wars box office profits failed to cover cost of buying Lucasfilm, which confirms the reporting that Valiant Renegade did last year. So, Lauren, I'll go to you since you are joining us. Uh, it appears that Disney needs a narrative shift in the media, and it appears that some out there are all too willing to provide it. But I think that their stock dropping and this, this uh, now, I guess you can put a fork in it, this idea that Star Wars is a failure financially I think this is going to be a difficult hill for them to climb to pin pelts with a uh, crushing defeat when Disney has uh, these kinds of losses at its feet. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's true. I think the only thing that they can do right now is play for time. They've got a year, and so they have to give Disney some kind of a time frame to try and, and turn some things around and hopefully come up with some kind of a, a positive story. That's what, what the media hopes. Otherwise, they're just going to continue to bleed for a year. The stock price will continue to drop, and it'll make things easier for Pelts. So I don't think this is terribly surprising. Uh, when I've been reading how people have been responding to the article online, it looks like the Disney supporter side of the argument are all trying to say, well, you're not counting merchandise sales. And actually, they did talk about that in the article a little bit. And if you think the merchandise sales are going to help them uh, in the <laughs> state that they're in right now, that's a ridiculous argument. It's You can just go to uh, to Ollie's and, and all of the outlet stores, and that'll tell you the story that you need to know. Lord, well, they also can, didn't count the Disney Plus shows. You, you can also look right. at the uh, uh, fate of the people who have toy contracts with them for Star Wars those companies are hurting bad because of this too. And yeah, their relationship and, with retailers is going downhill. Yeah. And, and I would argue that merchandise traditionally is where most of the money was made. And so if, if the merchandise isn't moving, that's how you know you're dealing with a dead property. Star Wars is no longer evergreen. And I, I hate saying that, but I don't see a way that you can turn it around. This is why generational capture was such an important thing with the sequel trilogy. When they failed to do that, and when the merchandise plummeted, it's hard to get out of that death spiral. So let's go to uh, the Nelson Peltz issue here. Uh, Disney have, uh, clearly is taking it on the chin when it comes to the narratives that are now out there, and those narratives appear to be based on fact. Caroline Reed, by the way, when she's doing that assessment of Star Wars, she's not able to take into account the marketing spend because that's not publicly available. So it's actually right. far, far worse. But Lou, what do you think is going on here with Wall Street Journal claiming that Nelson Peltz got crushed? Do you agree with them, or do you think that this is all just a bunch of nonsense, part I... of the narrative of Disney? <laughs> I just think they want to continue to uh, embrace the posterior of Bob Iger at this stage. <laughs> uh, and besides that, you know, look, everything in our culture lately, whether it's food on the, uh, the sh chef channels or whether it's uh, everything's become sports. Everything's become it's no longer. Well, what makes sense and what's happening? And let's go into analysis. It's who won, who lost. 
So technically, yeah, Peltz lost, but did he lose to win? I, Lauren, what's what's the line about if you strike me down, I'll return more powerful than ever? Uh, <laughs> we don't we don't just think he's coming back in a year. By the way, to get two seats, we think it'll be more like four or five, right? Exactly. Yeah, and I have a hard time imagining that it, it, there doesn't seem to be a lot in the pipeline that looks like it can rescue Disney at the box office, at least. And that being the case, how long are the investors going to put up with this? Because I, I can't see them continuing to, like, after the the proxy fight was over and, and Disney declared victory, suddenly they made all these announcements about things that were going to be delayed or moved and all that stuff. They neglected to mention any of that before the proxy fight was done. And I imagine investors, they've got to be steaming about some of this. Like, they well, can't put up with this forever. Especially this story about the fact that they haven't made money but lost money on Star Wars. It isn't the fact which some suspected, some didn't, so what? Here's the numbers. It's, why didn't you tell us this before the proxy fight? And what it means is, in a practical sense, putting aside Star Wars specifically, whatever they tell them next time, they're not going to be as eager to believe because their credibility has been shot so full of holes by this and so many other things. Um, I was reading a story somewhere, I think I sent it to you guys, I don't remember, saying that basically the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe is all dependent on the new Captain America movie. And uh, yeah, yeah. If, what, a, if, what a horrible strategic move. <laughs> well, but, but the point is they don't get many shots. They're making fewer things. Some of those things have no direct revenue result other than they hope keeping at least, if not encouraging more, uh, subscribers to Disney+. Plus, uh, It's not the same thing as having a movie go out and do $100 billion, zillion dollars, gang. It's not quantifiable to an investor looking to see whether the company's going the right way or the wrong way. So I think maybe that's an important question here, because I think um, critics of our position may say, well, look, Disney stock is still at 113. That's, that's not the worst that it could be. So... Of what is uh, on the release slate for this year, what is the movie that we think will be the bellwether that could change the stock evaluation? What is something that, if it fails, is a major black eye to Disney? Well, that's and a great how question. Do how do you define failure? We all believe that Deadpool and Wolverine is going to make money. But if it, quote unquote, only makes $750 million and not a billion, is that a win or a loss? Is that being crushed? Is that affecting the total? Because people are expecting such greatness from a few shreds that are coming through that any one of them not doing that level is going to be a blow. They're going to say, well, that's a loss, even though they made money. And by the way, that story about, well, at least it's 113 or whatever. It's not as bad as it ever was. No, but it's not as good as the over 200 that the guy Bob blames everything on got it to a couple of years ago. I agree, but what I'm trying to ask is, what do we think is there must succeed? Uh, so, uh, so let me let me answer that, Lauren. Inside Out Two is going to be a very important film because we're hearing that quality wise, it might be very very good, and if it is very very good, and if audiences don't return to Disney, then that's going to mean that the brand is critically damaged. Inside Out 2, let's let's put that to the side now. That's going to be important. Deadpool and Wolverine, then, is going to be a majorly important film for Marvel. Okay? But let's put that to the side. Perhaps the most critical film they have in the entire year is Moana 2, because that's their most valuable princess franchise they have. It's their most popular princess franchise, and it's not even close. People want to bring up Tangled or Frozen. No, no, no. Moana has the most watch time on Disney+, Plus uh, in terms of Disney movies consistently, and it's been out forever. So... If Moana 2 tanks, then Disney is in deep, deep trouble. But Inside Out 2 is going to be our first test case of what happens now? Have audiences soured on Disney? Have families decided that they're soured on Disney? And by the way, Lorne, we, we don't need to forget that Walt Disney World is one third of all of Disney's profits. And I am hearing that crowd levels have become very lax during spring break season. I was, I was looking at Disney World and I was actually looking very positively on their chance to rebound this year. But they, that may have been because early spring break crowd levels were uh, higher due to Florida usually having early spring breaks. Now, as we are into April, 
things are not looking good for Disney crowd levels. We'll talk about that soon. That's another key indicator if you have a problem with this company, because again, Disney World is the crown jewel of all of their financial two, assets in terms of revenue. Two, two things on all of that. First of all, we may think that it looks like maybe inside out it's going to do well, but they don't think so. How do I know? They showed 35 minutes of it at the yes. time. Not five minutes, not 10 minutes. And that clip they put into the uh, annual meeting was nothing if not full of ennui, as we that say. Was, that uh, was to assure, and well played there with ennui, uh, but, but that was to assure theater owners that they're not going to have Disney animation turn into Star Wars. Well, that's because, what that's about, Lou. And the theater owners are afraid because they watched that deal where if you bought the three Pixar movies together, yes. you got a free ticket, totally roll over and die. It didn't encourage people. Exactly. But they had guys, to it. But don't forget, it's Nelson Peltz that's being crushed. That's what we're supposed yeah. to believe right now, but, despite but the back, fact the man made 300 to $500 million off the proxy battle. Back to the theme park uh, attendance issue that you mentioned also. Um, if Moana 2 is somehow with a short schedule and a new group of people and uh, all the odds against it, a hit, you know the first thing that says to an investor? So you've got this most valuable property. You've made a sequel after all these years that's doing great. And it's like those T-shirts that say, I went to see Moana and all I got was a splash pad that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like you had this valuable thing and that's all you could figure out how to do with it for, what is it, 10, 15 years since the original movie? That's uh, right. It's, it, like a, it's, it's like a direct to VHS being turned into a theatrical release. It, it's, it, it's, it's just, just not a good it's look. Insane, insane. Exactly. Well, Lauren, you have, uh, you have been pained over the past years to watch what has happened to Star Wars. Um, do you think that it's that it's Nelson Peltz being crushed, or do you think that it's Disney franchises that are being crushed? And I'll give you the final word on it. Oh, it's definitely the franchises. They have all failed in the last several years. And uh, again, I don't know how you recover. The problem is that you need that generational capture. You need to have the younger generation embrace whatever it is that you're selling as cool so that they continue to buy the product and they, and as they grow older, they move up into the more adult tiers of entertainment and then they pass it on to their kids. That's what you hope if you have an evergreen property. Um, there's no nostalgia start. being created right now. Is what you're saying? None. No, it, no. And besides that, it's like you look at the the source material. Uh, stepping away from Star Wars right now, look at Marvel. The comics industry is effectively dead as well. The only thing they can do now is go back to the popular material that was made in years past and ruin it. And that's what drives <laughs> away your audience. This is why. Uh, this is why the sequel trilogy retroactively damaged the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy is that if you screw up what the chosen one did, who is supposed to be the savior of the star Wars universe and bring balance to the force, then suddenly the rest of the story doesn't matter anymore. You can't fix that without removing it. And that's the situation that we're in now is that if the audience is not only soured on the new material you've made, but the original material that made them love it in the first place, they're going to go find another property. That's right. But and, it's Nelson Peltz that's being crushed. Well, yeah. But 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 they're so tone deaf. Look, if you're going to do a new Ray movie, which a lot of people would look forward to, and you're going to announce it to the world, and this is how you're going to start the buzz that's supposedly going to lead to success... Why do you put that obeyed Chinoy lady out front? Why aren't you saying, hey, it's going to be a new exciting story with your favorite new character, and hey, we're coming back to it. Isn't that great? And oh, by the way, the director's name is X, and shut her the heck up. But they are so enamored of their politics and their stand for uh, women's something, I don't know, <laughs> that they made that the keynote and all that said to people who are sick of that stuff in every other media anyway was, <laughs> oh, God, again, no thanks. Even if well, they might have liked the movie, if there was one, which we haven't heard that there's really a script, and it kind of got bumped around the schedule to the point of who knows. It, 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 they just don't know how to sell anymore. They are so caught up in their little window that they don't know how to sell. And by the way, Pro, that goes back to this thing about Unilever and Ben and & Jerry's. Because when Ben and Jerry's announced that they were going to not sell their ice cream 
uh, to Israelis in the West Bank, which they called occupied Palestinian territory. And I'm not trying to get political, but what happened? Texas and half a dozen other states divested their stock in Unilever. Right. They well, got and rid of it. Well, and well what deserved. was the response? Ben and Jerry's on 4th of July, 2023 said, quote, this 4th of July, it's time we recognize that the U.S. exists on stolen indigenous land <laughs> and commit to returning it. And what happened? The Indian tribe called the Nulhegan Band of the Kosuk Abenaki Nation that used to be on the land where Ben and Jerry's headquarters is said, uh, we'd like to talk to you about that. Would you like to give us the land back? <laughs> and so, meanwhile, PETA, I'm sure, was saying you've taken this... your ice cream is stolen dairy. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and those cows, they fart. And they ruin the atmosphere. Heaven forbid. Everything's dystopian, Lou. Nothing is fun. Take all the joy out of, every, of everything. They just, they just don't know when to shut the heck up and make ice cream. Or shut the heck up and make good movies. Whether they know how to do that anymore at all is... is and oh, by the way, question. Nelson Peltz is getting crushed, though. It's Nelson Peltz. Well, sure he is. Sure he is. <laughs> the positive outline you look for in this, though, is that this is what gives rise to competition that will serve the market. It's like, as a, refugee right. from, as a refugee from Star Wars, I was starting to flirt with, well, maybe I can go over to Warhammer 40K. I don't know a whole lot about it, but then you see what's happened there. So... Now I'm looking at hell divers and praying that they just try and and keep this. Lauren, we're going to have to make our own stuff. We're just going to well, have to make our own stuff, Lauren. Well, and I'm doing that. You know, you guys always uh, nicely laugh that I'm such a retro gaming person that Civilization Four, not even Five or Six, <laughs> is what I play all the time. But there's a new game. Oh, I forget the name now. That's coming out. Oh, called uh, Manor Lords. That I've mm -hmm. been watching previews of because it's about to go into early release. And it looks dynamite, and I'm really looking forward to one again. So we're all looking for replacements, and we're all looking to expand. But Disney used to be the place we went for that, and it isn't anymore. That's right. But, folks, we will continue to bring you the news and analyze what's going on with Disney as we continue to look for more fun places that all the fans can go, and it will happen. The market tells me so. All right, folks, make sure you check out Lorne Connor of thatparkplace.com on his channel, as well as member-exclusive content with Lou Wasserman's Ghost. And, yeah. Lou, I have to say that uh, That Park Place podcast online, also known as T3PO, you did uh, your very first episode with Vash Sky called The Hollywood Backlot with Lou and you, and it's one of the best podcasts I have had the honor of listening to in a very, very long time even on just the first episode. So well, congratulations. Well, thank, thank you. Your, your prejudice, of course, but I'm happy to see in the comments that the folks out there uh, really enjoy it too and enjoy the genre guys so much, which we are having so much fun doing that. I hope you are, Lauren. I know I am. Uh, and we're finding out things, not just about movies, but about ourselves and the way we react to them. And right. um, this most recent one of, of uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, I think, was the most in a strange way, the most personal, even though none of us are like those awful people. Uh, but next time, speaking of science fiction, we're heading back to Jupiter to see what's going on with Hal and the Discovery in 2010, the year we make contact. Well, fantastic stuff. And gentlemen, I am so appreciative to have both of you on the team working towards helping others find good entertainment and understanding what made it good in the first place. Folks, it's now your turn. Like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, drop a comment down below, and let us know, do you believe that Nelson Pelse was crushed by Disney? Or is this just mush from the media? All right, folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Ah, floral. It's time for you to walk the plank. What? Why? Because you, you haven't subscribed to WDW Pro yet. Nor bookmark that parkplace.com on your web browser to get great articles from great contributors. What?